Hi there, my name is Richard Burkett and today I thought I would uh, just take you through some of the equipment I use for wildlife photography. Um, I'm often asked uh, what lenses I, I do use. Um, the answer usually is dependent on what I'm photographing and what uh, situation I'm in. Um, so today I've got two of my lower lower focal length zoom lenses with, with me. Um, so here I've got the Canon 7200 f2.8 LIS Mark II and this one here is Canon um, it's 100 to 400 f4.5 to 5.6 ISL Mark II. Um, we'll first concentrate on this one, the 7200. It's, it's a great lens. Um, Max aperture 2.8, so great for diffusing the backgrounds, um, very sharp focus, very good in low light and very fast on AF um, autofocus tracking. Um, for the sort of species you can use this for really, um, some hide work for some mammal species, um, some larger birds, um, and generally though, th this is really good for sort of fairly um, close subjects. So if you're photographing deer at close range or if you're photographing any sort of badgers and foxes and things like that, it's, it's a great lens, uh, 7200. Um, and obviously with that, you can um, effectively increase your focal length if you're using a crop sensor camera. So if you're using a camera with 1.3 crop or 1.6 crop, effectively you're then increasing your magnification. So at the bottom range of 70 up to 200, you effectively times your focal length by your crop. If you're using a full frame body, then again, you can use um, a, a 1.4 or two times um, extender, um, which will then increase your focal distance. So you know, it does help, you lose a stop of light on, on a 1.4, um, but then if, you, if you're limited on your budget, then you can literally you know, get that a little bit extra reach if you need to, but uh, it's a great lens. Um, as I said before, very fast autofocus tracking, minimum focus distance, I think it's about 40 um, inches on this one, and it's got um, four stops of image stabilization. So um, particularly good uh, for, for panning movements up and down, left to right, um, and, and certainly tracking your subjects if, if the light's a bit low, gives you that added advantage of shooting. Um, certainly at less, um, the shutter speed's a little bit less, and obviously enable you to get to, to counteract that camera shake a bit. But yes, an absolutely fantastic lens. I bought this second hand, I think roughly mint condition for about 1200 pounds. So um, I think there are just over two and a bit thousand pounds to buy, but you can get these camera lenses through many reputable stores in the UK, um, which I'll include in the description below this uh, video blog. But yeah, as I said, a great lens, um, an all rounder really. And I use extensively for things like um, photographing red deer, fallow deer, um, badgers, foxes, especially at close range. Quite nice and light as well. I didn't say before, this um, lens weighs in at just less than um, 1.5 kilograms. I think it's um, um, I think it's 1.47. So, you know, really is quite a, a nice, a nice light lens really. Um, but yeah, that's your uh, 70 to 200 F2.0 um, IS. And there are other ones out there available. You can get a um, some other Canon lenses to 75 to 300, f4.5 to 5.6, which aren't L lenses, but equally um, pretty good, but uh, not quite as sharp as these. But uh, yeah, a great lens to have in your camera bag. Okay, moving on from the 70 to 200 to this one here, slightly bigger brother. This is the 100 to 400 Canon f4.5 to 5.6 LIS Mark II. Um, now this this lens is, is a beauty. I've had this lens for, for now probably about four or five years. I had the previous uh, Mark I version, which was good, but not quite as, as good as this one. There's been some um, big improvements on autofocus and certainly the four stop image stabilization this lens now possesses. Um, it, it's a great, great lens for most photographic situations. Having that zoom range from 100 to 400, effectively, if you're using a crop sensor, uh, again, you can you can then have the added benefit then of, of increasing that magnification. The only slight downside is to 4.5 to 5.6 against the f2.8 of the uh, 7200 is is a little bit limiting in that situation. But for most well lit situations and in some low light, um, dependent on your ISO capability of your camera, this this 100 to 400 is a good all rounder really. Um, for most situations. Um, I've used this extensively if I'm out in the field, um, certainly if I need to be quite mobile, um, sort of crawling, uh, a lot of stalking. It's nice and light with your camera body. 
um, and it able you to use that focal range of 100 to 400 so it's quite comfortable if your subjects get too close or if your subjects are moving away um, it's got a lovely panning movement to it as well um, it's minimum focus distance to this I think it's 37 inches so you know you can focus pretty close up so if you're in a situation where you want to um, almost do a little bit of macro work as well this this lens will will deliver that um, and the image stabilization on this is, is absolutely fantastic another good added bonus for this obviously mine are fitted with um, uh, lens coat um, covers uh, this is max 4 HD this is just to keep my lens in, in pristine condition another added benefit this lens is fitted inside just after the lens hood there and if you can see there's a little with a window there, which is a great little addition in the lens hood the previous model didn't have, um, is whereas you're able to dial in your circular polarizer when you're using it on the front of the lens, um, rather than before you had to remove your lens cap, which was a bit of an inconvenience. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, as I said, it's got the four stops, image stabilization mode, um, and it's, uh, it's full-time manual override as well in there, um, and it's an absolutely cracking, cracking lens. Um, this is probably the lens I use most of all, really, when I'm out and about. If I'm not lugging around a big prime lens, I would say this is certainly um, my day-to-day -day use lens, really. Um, the previous model, as I said, the autofocus tracking on it was a little bit laboured, a little bit slow. But this is, you know, absolutely fantastic to track birds in flight. So a great all-round camera for, for bird photography, really, especially if, you've, as I said, you've got the crop sensor. Uh, 1.3 to 1.6 you can certainly get a lot closer with this um, if you can do the math but uh, well worth it well worth it and these retail I think um, round about roughly now they're about 1700 pounds I think but you can pick these up on the second hand market quite comfortably um, for sort of you know around sort of the 1200 pound mark in, in relatively good condition um, but uh, yeah another great a great lens to have in your camera bag, the Canon 100 to 400 f4.5 to 5.6 LIS Mark II. That pretty much concludes my uh, lens review today of the 70 to 200 and the 100 to 400 Canon. Um, wildlife zoom lenses um, you know it's not really all about the size of the lens prime lenses have their place they're very good they have their downsides they're very heavy you know this being just below 1.6 kilograms this one um, just below 1.5 you know they're relatively lightweight prime lenses weigh a heck of a lot um, you know you need a lot more faster shutter speed to to get a good sharp shot so you know these have their place but it isn't all about that really you know it's all about you know studying your subject bird mammal species you know looking up looking at their habits um, how you conceal yourself how you read the signs of the bird's behavior you know you can get yourself really close with with you know, a 7200 lens if you have the right approach and the right technique so uh, it's definitely not all about how big the lenses are and it's not all about how much you spend you can equally get a Canon lens Sigma lens Tamron lens um, of equal focal distance for probably a lot less um, and they'll still do the job pretty well. But ultimately, having the L, which stands for luxury in the Canon lineup, um, really does give you that added benefit of extra sharpness when you need it, and you know reliability, durability, and lastability, if you like. Um, you know, they really will deliver in all types of conditions, dust, sand, wind, rain. You know, they're not fully waterproof, but they will do the job in harsh conditions, and they'll take a few knocks and bangs as well. Um, but uh, ultimately, you know, if you can, uh, you know, keep them as, uh, as, as good condition as possible, then it, it's great when you want to upgrade and you want to, you know, move on and get a new lens, you're going to get more money for it. So um, if you've got any comments, please leave them below. And if you like what you see today, this is my first review. Hopefully there'll be many more. If you could leave me some comments, uh, and, you know, happily I can, um, you know, do some improvements next time around. But uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.